seriously as one of the scariest Doctor Who episodes ever. Did you have a sense of fear? Did you think it was scary when you read that particular script? Yeah, but actually, so this is the episode flatline that you're, you're when, did, when, what day does it come out here? Oh, oh, tomorrow. Okay, I won't give too much away then, but this is the episode that you will see tomorrow, which is effectively about killer graffiti. Um, but it was one of those film in the episodes where it was all CGI, so you actually can't see anything, so you have to invent the fear and imagine um, that things are coming after you, and in reality, it's like a tennis ball or, um, or nothing. Have you seen the final result? No, I haven't. I've been here, so I haven't, I haven't seen it either. I think we'll pass over to the facts. <laughs> yes, first place to Jenna. Hello, nice scarf. <laughs> Where are the AV gentlemen, ladies? Microphone on the route. Oh, oh, this way. <laughs> um, my question is, so Doctor Who has a lot of like props and sets and costumes that are really cool and really unique and I was wondering what your favourite of them were. Okay, I've got a little bit in trouble. I need to be careful how I approach this. Basically, there's something on the TARDIS which is my favourite, which because they're Gallifreyan balls that come out of the TARDIS set, and then you can kind of juggle with them and, and play and like throw them at Peter and um, and and also you, you find that the screens on the TARDIS you can spin them around and it's like a, it's like a game. <laughs> So I enjoy that. And also, I don't know if you've seen the squidgy um, telepathic circuit. Yeah, that's that's quite fun. And that was supposed to be filled with goop, but that hasn't happened yet. The goop's on its way from America, apparently. <laughs> but there's lots, it's impossible to be on the TARDIS without, um, without playing with things. Like, you can't stop touching the buttons. And also, having the mini TARDIS in my handbag in tomorrow's episode that you'll see was, was very fun. Spoilers! <laughs> We know it's a tiny TARDIS, I hope. Another question, please. Oh, say that again, sorry? I started working on the show. And I very quickly fell in love with this mad and wonderful world that I knew nothing about before. Um, but that's what happens, it kind of takes a hold of you. Before you got into Doctor Who, did you dip into the show at all, or was it completely new? No, but it's in, in, in the UK, it's kind of, you know, it, it, it's on the tube and it's everywhere. It's kind of part of the, it's very much part of the culture over there, but it was never on when I was a child, so what, I'm what, on one of what we call the denied children in the UK. Um, so I, I, missed, I missed that, but I was always aware of who the doctors were, and who the assistants were, because it's kind of in your psyche, I suppose. As an actress at the back of your mind, did you ever think, mm -hmm. possibly? No, not really. It, it's, um, you, the audition came through and it was kind of, it was a real, it was a real surprise. And, you know, I remember my agent saying, um, well, first off, she said you're auditioning for something called Men on Waves, a.k.a. Um, Doctor Who, but if you tell anyone, the sky will fall down, so keep it a secret. Um, and it was one of those of, okay, that would be kind of fun, but, you know, it's going to be a really long old um, audition circuit, and, you know, they'll be seeing loads of people. But it was kind of something that I just was like, cool, I get to go meet Matt and have a fun audition, and um, I, I kind of didn't really overthink it. <laughs> Unlike me. <laughs> there we go. Hi. Hello. Hi. I was wondering what you found the main differences being between filming with Matt and filming with Keisha. the show is totally different. It, it feel, it, it's kind of incomparable really because you just feel like you're filming a different show. Um, but the scripts are very, very different and you know, we've been doing these longer scenes so the format is quite different. You know, like in, um, in Deep Breath, the restaurant sequence which is like about 15 pages long which is kind of something new that Stephen's been, um, been trying this series. So the energy is quite different. I suppose 
I think the main difference is the doctors is is Matt's doctor will go to the room and you kind of you kind of like dive in where you can, whereas Peter's doctor kind of is a lot more still and he'll make the room come to him. So it's, it's a different energy, I think. So working between the two is really interesting. But it's the same on the 50th, it's, you know, working between three different doctors and each one has, has such a different um, energy, I suppose. Lovely, another question, please. Hi. Um, Hello. Who's that? Where are you coming from? Oh, here. Hello. No. Um, this is a question from a friend of mine over in Canada. Okay. Um, she wants to know, have you ever been um, at the slightest bit of envy towards other, the recent companions, most notably um, Amelia Pond? I mean, she has really tall legs. I'm like... <laughs> not get envious of that. It's quite funny if me and Karen ever have a chat actually, just like the two of us together, height difference. Um, but I think, oh, there's lots really. I mean, I thought she had a really beautiful story of, of her meeting the Doctor as a child and I don't know, I, I'm feeling pretty lucky. Yeah, you're very lucky you're the only companion who's ever been with every single Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> not floating, not floating at all. Another question please. This kind of relates to what you just said. What's it like being the impossible girl who has been with every doctor? Because other companions have come and gone, but Clara's been literally everywhere. I love it. I mean, I, I tell you what was really special was doing those scenes with William uh, Hartnell and, and recreating that set and going back to like like one of those first scenes. That bit felt like really um, special. And being part of the 50th with John Hurt, meeting Tom Baker, it's... it's um, yeah, I'm just really great. I'm really grateful to Stephen, and it, it feels like she knows him really well because she's known all of his incarnations. So that's a really nice um, thing in their dynamic and their relationship, which is nice to play. Lovely. Another question, please. Hi, yes. Hello. Um, when you were in school, did you want to be an actress? I did. I did from a very, a very, very young age. So I used to do all the. Um, also, I was very lucky because the school I went to did lots of plays and then we used to travel with the plays up to um, like festivals and um, play lots of different parts and things like that. So I was always doing it from a very young age. Lovely. Another question, please. Hi, Dina. I'm Vivian. Hello, Vivian. <laughs> um, so, our Doctor Who, you have lots and lots of gorgeous outfits and costumes because of all the time changes, changes and everything. So, um, I was wondering, what was your favourite costume? That Clara was in? Mm, I have to say, I'm a big fan of Osman and I love all the cosplay that people do. Because I just think, how many times in your life can you wear an egg whisk? <laughs> <laughs> so that, that outfit in particular is very fun. Um, having like a, a utility belt. Um, and I also, in fact, the snowman. I really love the snowman costume. But it's great, you know, week to week to be able to kind of step into periods like that is really great. Um, do, you, do you have any say in the choosing of modern day Clara costumes? Yeah, it's more like we'll talk about... Um, and I, we've been trying to adapt stuff for the episode as well, like often there's practicalities of how much do we have to run in this episode. Um, you know, how, are we going to be outdoors or, you know, so actually there's quite a bit of practicality in it. But also I have to wear heels because if I don't, it's really hard to get me and Peter in the same shop. <laughs> So I actually have a box now, which is, which literally on set goes, um, okay, can, can we bring in Jenna's box, please? And a box comes in that I have to stand on, so me and Peter can be in the same shop. You're talking about Peter wandering off set at one point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shall I tell that story? Okay. Um, so this is just what Peter does on this. I hope he doesn't mind me saying this. Oh, well, it's in England, it's fine. <laughs> We had a night on a night shoot and we are in a power station and it's something we've realised that you can't leave Peter alone because he often goes for a little walk and then you don't know where he is and is missing because he just likes to explore, he's quite doctor-like in that way. Um, so we are in a power station and there was about uh, 10 minutes and at the last 10 minutes of a day on set everyone goes into panic zone because it's, you know, we've got two shots and we've got 10 minutes so everybody needs to be quick and get it in the can. And um, so Peter goes missing, and then suddenly I turn around, it's like 3am, 10 minutes to go, and he's soaking wet. 
Yeah. So I'm like, what is, where have you been? What have you been doing? And it turns out he got a little bit hungry. So he decided to go for a walk to look for a pasty. Do you know what pasty? You guys have pasties? Yeah. So he went to look for a pasty and found a big red button and decided to press it. <laughs> and it turns out it was a shower. <laughs> so he came back to set, literally dripping, no pasty. Much like his character? No! Not at all. I wish that you could actually see what goes on between the takes, because the two of us are like are like absolute children. I'm not I'm not kidding. We're absolutely pathetic. We do stupid childish accents and voices to make ourselves giggle all day long and actually have to physically remove ourselves from each other at opposite ends of the set so we can get some work done. Is how it goes. So he's nothing, and it's the same with I don't know if anyone knows him as Malcolm Tucker from the thick of it. He's you know, he's uh, he's the kindest, joyful, silliest man, which he is as the doctor as well, but there's something more mythical and alien and removed about his doctor, so this there's a real there's a real contrast between what he's what he's really like. Was it difficult uh, doing Matt's last scene? Yeah, yeah. It was funny, it was a really funny day. It's such a strange atmosphere, but I think it's because you're basically experiencing two big emotions at once, which is, you know, being really sad and moved and, um, you know, it's kind of bittersweet, I think, saying goodbye to one, one friend, but also equally in the same sentence and the same scene, being really excited about, you know, the start of something else. So it's really, it is an incredibly, it's no other show that, that does it. It's, you know, it's, the, regen, the whole regeneration thing is such an unusual but amazing part of the show. Another question, please. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Hello. Hello. You're an amazing actress. Thank you very much. Um, uh, what was your favourite memory from behind the scene with Matt filming that series? Oh my goodness, the whole series. Oh, there's so much. There's so much. And the, the great thing about it is that every day is different. And it's not just what you do on set either, you know. It's stuff like, you know, we get to travel together afterwards. You kind of... You're in this strange bubble with just the two of you. But he's generally just like really quite clumsy. Matt likes to wind me up a lot. That's like Matt's fun game. Matt's like an older big brother who will kind of be be just doing this all day to like keep himself entertained. Or likes to hide and then jump out and scare you. And um, yeah, he's 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 quite a he's quite a tease. And he's very clumsy. So I kind of almost enjoy that karma in the tapes when he when he fell over like during the hero shot and he's doing like the doctor who skid on the gravel and he looks really iconic and then he'll follow up with a fall <laughs> and the funniest bit is he'll try to get up and pretend he's not hurt himself and then he'll hobble in the corner <laughs> lovely another question please would you like a jelly baby <laughs> Jelly Baby's really chewy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hello. I have like a burning question. Go on. Uh, fire away. Yes. Um, you know how Matt Smith says, 
always that his bow tie is cool. Yeah. What is your honest, honest to God opinion on bow ties? Do you <laughs> No, no, no um, hesitation here. We no, no, no. We need an answer. The first thing that ran through my head is, if I don't say it, they're cool, will Stephen Moffat fire me? <laughs> Oh, cool. Can I just say, when I was at school, my school uniform was a bow tie. Just a bow tie? Yeah. Did you tell Matt Smith? No, I never told him that. You should tell him. I should tell him. Yes. So I, I actually, I actually was wearing the bow tie before Matt Smith. <laughs> A t -shirt before the, the show. It's like, okay, you've got Harnell, you've got, you know, you calm down. Um, actually, the sales of bow ties rocketed when Smith took over as a doctor, yeah. so that says something. I heard that. That actually came up. Does anybody follow um, Uber Facts on Twitter? If you don't, you should, because it's really interesting, random facts. And it, that came up on Uber Facts. And, uh, but yeah, what did they say? Sorry. Hello, my name is Bridget and I'm a huge fan of Doctor Who. I sincerely hope you're having a great time in New Zealand. I am, thank you. I have two questions if you don't mind answering them both. Okay. Question number one is for my friend in America. She wants to know who's better, Trump Doctor or Lemon Doctor? No! That is a forbidden question. That's like saying who do you like better, your mum or your dad? <laughs> You, that's, that's, that's the forbidden question. My second question is, what is your opinion on Doctor Who fan fiction? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who fan fiction? Yeah. Are we talking about the dodges or the... <laughs> Like, I, 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 what I do see is a lot of pictures and, and inventive and really creative things that people make and draw, and, but I'm not very familiar with the fan fiction. It's just because I've got a yeah. little bit of my story that I'm writing, would you like to have it? Yeah, absolutely. What? <laughs> so is this a story that you've created? Oh, right, cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Moffat. It says and Stephen Moffat. I'll pass that on. Thank you. Thanks for answering my questions, and I hope you have a, loved, a lovely time in New Zealand. Thank you. Thanks very much. Oh, wasn't she lovely? Another question, please. Hi there. Um, Hello. Just want to say thank you for coming down to New Zealand. It's You're awesome. Welcome. You're fantastic. Thank you. Um, I don't know about everyone else, but I love the scene and hide when you just say the Doctor out of the pocket universe and you swing out and you give him a high five. Yeah. And the chemistry is just awesome. <laughs> really? So that was my first day. That yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like my first day after Osman. It was my first day. Yeah. Uh, well, I was wondering. This question. Okay. I love that high five. I'm intrigued. I know it's coming. Are we going to ask? No, what do we want? What, what, what did you let me come up on stage with your high five? I hope it's not an anti climax, but. <laughs> I'm gonna miss. <laughs> 